What I have is this anxiety that if, like something bad might happen or s I might make a mistake that I would regret for the rest of my life. The college program for students with autism spectrum disorder recognized for a long time now that we needed more emphasis in regard to transitioning from college into the workforce. What we've done is we created the Employment Workshop, which is three days of uh, intense preparation for employment. In day one, we look at the preparation for employment. In day two, we talk about earning the job. And day three, we talk about keeping that job. When we look at the research right now, we notice that employers are really looking for individuals to advocate and disclose their autism, yet knowing when to disclose and how is really challenging because of communication difficulties. I want them to get a good first impression of me. With the connotations applied to autism these days, I get the feeling Advertising it would, would kind of hurt my first impression. Through the workshop, I think that they um, hear about their own individual choice of if they should and the legal surroundings about when you do um, the right time and how to gain the right accommodations. The crucial inquiry you're going to need to figure out is do you disclose during the interview? So now they have a better understanding of when the most appropriate time would be and most importantly, how to do it in order to gain the right accommodations they need within the workplace. Right now we have students leaving and in the interview process, they kind of get fumbled. If there's one thing I've noticed over the years from feedback I've gotten from friends is that I tend to be usually my own harshest critic. I think almost any job interview, you can expect with a high probability that your employer or your potential employer is going to ask you what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. Many times they haven't had the opportunity to ask questions directly to employers um, in a time where they can feel comfortable in addressing questions maybe they've always had but haven't had the right opportunity to be able to do it. So now that they have this safe place to be able to ask those questions to employers who could potentially be employing them one day, they're able to take that that information and, and value it and um, understand what kind of preparedness skills they're going to have to um, tailor to within the workplace. Research shows that a lot of individuals with autism actually are some of the most reliable and loyal individuals when it comes to uh, the workforce, um, but they don't really know quite how to get there. Networking is very important. Students need to learn to network from the time they are a freshman until they are a senior. So they have to learn to speak out, to reach out to people in their field. I see it as um, reaching out to people and possibly as an attempt to make friends and meet new people that you've never really encountered before in your life. You get to know people. Those people can like be a source for your skills. Many um, individuals with autism have a certain interest or passion for a subject or field, and if a job revolves around that, that's going to create a really intense focus that can create an increase in productivity. The passion I feel for it would be enough motivation for me to learn all I can about it so that I can do well. You have people of an average to above average intelligence. They're not going to engage in office gossip. If you tell them to take a 10 minute break, they don't take a nine or 11, they take a 10 minute break. And there's a real specificity, I think, to their life. And you don't have that, but as an employer, that's of great interest to them. Somebody that does have attention to detail, that will focus on the job at hand, that understands the expectations and will see them through. That's, that's the kind of employee you dream of. We almost need a mind shift on the side of the employer as well, where it's rather than the first flag that goes up is, what are they going to need? What do I have to provide? One of the first should be, I want to know more about their, their deep and focused interests. I want to know more about those things that they have really examined or spent hours perfecting and working on in their lives, the things that they feel passionate about. I feel like if that can be just as an immediate question as what accommodations and supports might this person need, we can start to transcend some of that bias in the, work, in the workplace. So over three days, you're, gonna, you're going to have done a lot of self-reflection and a lot of assessing where you're at in your moment. What are my skill sets? What are my desires? So in this workshop, 
you've laid a lot of that out. You know, this, this helps people, you know, with their own individual challenges and it helps the employer with, with its challenges. In the last couple of days, I've learned to have confidence and stand up for myself. I do feel better prepared for employment. Definitely take this workshop up. Think about what you want to do next. Think about how it builds that story of your career and pursue it. Be prepared for some no's and eventually you'll get that yes. I would recommend this workshop to other people. You might get something out of it that you didn't, that you didn't know before. This workshop is held every summer and if you are interested in participating or if you know somebody in your life that might benefit, please reach out and contact us.